Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share a personal story with you. It was April 2020 and I was 27 weeks pregnant with my now three year old son. Just like many of us, I contracted COVID-19 during the height of the pandemic. It was a terrifying experience. My breathing became labored and I was quickly placed on a ventilator. Because I was 27 weeks pregnant and couldn't breathe, I had to have an emergency C-section to save my baby's life. By God's grace, and the incredible dedication of my medical team, I survived this traumatic experience. But I couldn't help but to think about all the countless families who lost loved ones during these trying times, most without any life insurance. Many people lost not only their loved ones, but simultaneously lost their homes, had to move out and or disrupt their children's day-to-day -day life. The importance of life insurance became very apparent to many during those times. In this video, I want to talk about the significance of life insurance and guide you through five essential questions that you should ask yourself to help you determine what type of life insurance and how much insurance is best for you and your family. Okay, so there are two types of insurance, term life and permanent life. Understanding these two options is crucial in making the best decision about your coverage. Term life insurance on one hand is like safeguarding for a specific period of time. It is designed to provide income protection. If you're still with us by the time your policy expires, it's you no longer have insurance. Permanent life insurance offers lifelong coverage without any expiration before your passing, assuming you keep up with the premium payment status. Permanent life insurance often gets criticized for its higher cost, lower returns on premiums. But here's the thing, cost is relative and life insurance is not an investment tool. Permanent life insurance may not be suitable for everyone, but it does have the potential to create generational wealth and provide tax-free benefits for your children. Ultimately, your choice between term and permanent life depends on your unique financial goals and your family needs. Both types have their merits, and in this video, we will help you make the right choice for your specific circumstances. Okay, jumping right in. Question number one, age. Perhaps the most fundamental consideration when it comes to life insurance is how does my age impact life insurance costs? Let's face it, none of us are getting any younger and the age factor plays a significant role in life insurance premiums. Here's why it's crucial to think about this early on. In your 20s, you can secure a reasonably priced term or whole life policy that provides financial security for your loved ones. For instance, my husband and I each have a $1 million term policy, and in our 30s, it only costs about $1,200 a year. That's pretty much about $100 a month for a death benefit of $1 million. Great deal. Now, let's fast forward a few decades. When you reach your late 50s and 60s, the cost of life insurance can skyrocket. In fact, we shopped around for policies for our parents who are in their late 50s. My goodness, it was ridiculous. A term policy providing, what, $100,000 in coverage was going to set us back about $80,000 a year. Age is in fact, is a factor that you cannot ignore. The older you get, the more you'll pay for the same level of coverage. So the early on you act, the better the financial protection you can secure for your family without draining your bank account. All right, so let's jump into question number two. What is my current health condition? Your health will significantly impact your life insurance decisions. Your current health conditions and your medical history play an important role in determining not just the type of policy you can qualify for, but also the cost. Life insurance companies uses your health as a key underwriting factor. It helps them assess the risk you pose as a policyholder. If you're in good health and have no significant medical issues, you're more likely to qualify for a better policy with lower premium payments. Now, if you're someone who leads a healthy lifestyle, you're maintaining a balanced diet, you're eating your veggies, you're exercising regularly, this can work in your favor. It's a testament to your commitment to well-being and potentially lead to more favorable insurance rates. However, pre-existing health conditions or lifestyle choices that poses higher risk can affect your premiums. Chronic health issues, smoking, or engaging in hazardous activities like bungee jumping or whatever can lead to higher costs, or in some cases make it even difficult to secure any type of coverage. Understanding your health's role in your life insurance need is not just about pricing, it's also about tailoring a policy that aligns with your unique circumstances. If you have health concerns, you may need to explore specific types of policies that considers riders for additional coverage. Your health influences the type of cost and 
insurance coverage, making it essential to consider as you navigate life insurance choices. Okay, we're gonna jump right into number three. What are my family's liabilities? This question is all about understanding your family's financial obligations. It's not just about your everyday liabilities like your mortgage. It's about taking a comprehensive view of your family's financial responsibilities, including your children. Consider the full scope of raising your children to adulthood. Are they in private school, pursuing special talents, or perhaps requiring additional support and care? These are all factors that will impact your family's financial stability and should be factored into your life insurance equation. Don't forget about business-related debt either. If you're involved in a business partnership, it's essential to consider how your partner's death might affect your ability to service these debts or the loss of their income contribution to your business. In essence, what you want to do at minimum is match the duration of your life insurance policy to the length of time it takes to pay off these significant liabilities and secure your family's financial future. This also safeguards you against the potential loss of income that comes with the passing of a partner who helps you manage these responsibilities. So life insurance doesn't need to be about covering the basics. It can be a great tool used to help protect and manage all of your family's financial commitments. Okay, so now we're going into question number four. How much income would you lose if your spouse tragically passed away? This question forms the cornerstone for determining the appropriate size of your life insurance policy. As a rule of thumb, it's often recommended to aim for a policy that is 10 to 12 times your annual earnings. So let me illustrate this with an example. Imagine you're in your early 40s and you're currently earning about 100K a year. In this case, you would want a policy ranging between 1 million and 1.2 million. Here's why that size matters. In the event something happens to you, your family would get a $1 million payout. They can then take this payout and invest it in the market for a reasonable 10% annual return, which translates to about $100,000 in annual income. You, in essence, will guarantee your family will continue to receive the income you were earning for them. All right, we're gonna jump into question number five. We're almost there, guys. <laughs> How much monthly premium can you afford? A crucial factor in life insurance decision-making process is how much premium can you realistically afford and can you comfortably service those payments for years to come? This question will help you decide between term insurance and permanent life insurance. It's not just about what type of coverage you want, it's also about what you can sustain. For high income earners with a significant net worth, a combination of term and permanent life insurance can often make the most sense. As I mentioned earlier, permanent life insurance sometimes get a bad rep for being cost prohibitive. In our case, we decided on a combination approach. We have a 1.5 million term policy which costs about $1,200 a year. The term policy is there to protect us during our income generating and during our child rearing and raising years. On the other hand, we have a $1.5 million permanent policy with a yearly premium of $17,000 a year. Now that is 14 times more expensive than what we're currently paying for term. However, we have a guarantee and are comfortable paying for that guarantee. This permanent policy serves as a guarantee that our children will receive 3 million tax-free throughout our estate when we pass away. Over 20 years, we will pay a total of $340,000 for each of our permanent policies, securing a $1.5 million death benefit for each of our children. The key here is that depending on your income level, your earning power, and specific financial goals, term or permanent, or a combination of both of them, can be the most suitable option for you. It's all about finding the right balance to protect your family and your family's financial goals. These five questions will definitely help you assess which policy and how much of a policy would be best for you and your family. I'm curious to hear how you guys decided on which policy worked for you guys. What type of policies do you have and how did you come to that conclusion? Share your ideas and your comments, questions in the comments and look forward to chatting with you guys soon.